Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back to talk about Kodak Gold and the film releases. So this week, if you haven't heard, it's been a huge week for the film community. We've had the announcement of Kodak Gold in medium format. We've had the announcement of Cinestill 400D in 35, 120 and large format. And we've had the announcement of Fugu Film, a new color slide ISO 400 in 35 millimeter film, brand new. No re-fridge, no old stock in a wine yard, no, nothing like that. New slide ISO 400. So let's talk about a little bit of this. Um, I put it on the news last week, but I like talking a little bit more with you guys today. Um, so it's a sort of opinion, sort of news, take it as is. Um, so Kodak Gold 120 has been in the works forever. I got notice from Kodak Alaris probably November, October 2021. And they were testing out emulsions and sending them to different testers and testing if it worked well in mini labs, it worked well in dip and dunks and home processing. And at that time, it seemed that it was some issue with the dip and dunks. So they basically were gonna ship me some rolls and they had to stop them to uh, improve the formula and so on. The meanwhile, they released the Tri-X disposable camera, which we all saw was just Tri-X and a disposable camera, which is fun to have a black and white little disposable camera. But honestly, I thought Kodak could have done better with a reusable camera, which they already sell the M35 and M38. So uh, fast forward a couple of months and Kodak Gold is back into the talks with Alaris and they're sending me a couple of rolls. I get a couple of rolls, shoot them. And I'm extremely slow when it comes to these uh, timelines and like, hey, they're gonna release this stuff. I just got too much to do and I never get to it. So I had two rolls of film. I shot, I had three, sorry, I shot two, shot them, developed them and scanned them with a camera because that's what I do at work. Uh, Use the Veloy setup, which is uh, here at my coworkers. Honestly, Kodak Gold in 120 looks like that. Kodak Gold in 120. It's not a new emulsion. I guess they've fine-tuned it to be a better in for and maybe have to tune it for 120, different backing, the uh, substrate or something like that. But it just looks like Kodak Gold. It has that bit of a yellow hue. It does shine in certain scenes. It doesn't in others. It doesn't have the same latitude as Portra. And honestly, the biggest problem I've seen with Kodak Gold in 120 are two. First of one, they mentioned that it would be 25% cheaper. Uh, this is the first time we've seen a Kodak Alaris or Kodak Moments, who's, who announced it officially, but it's a division of Kodak Alaris, that it would be 25% cheaper than Portra and Ektar, who has always been the cheapest film in the professional line. Um, and the problem there, they basically unveiled that their distribution network is an absolute mess and every single store is selling them at different prices. There's not a recommended price point and we've seen uh, gold at 120 at the same price as Ektar, sometimes more than Portra and whatever. And Bill Manning from Studio C41 has been calling out people. The cheapest that there has been has been basically the fine lab, but I do understand, for example, labs sometimes, at least from what I've talked with other labs in Europe, sometimes sell film at basically no margin so the customers maybe bring their film back to them because their business is not selling film it's more developing and scanning film so it's not a surprise but it would have been great to see kodak put an actual price recommended price point and i would expect this price point to be at the major retailers and i live here in europe maybe uh, like a recommended uh, sales price for europe and for the us and maybe for asia too and say okay Kodak Gold should be $40 a box of five, a pro pack. And that's another thing. They've called professional Kodak Gold 120 when it's the same emotion as 35. So I don't know what happened. Did it get upgraded as it got bigger? No idea. So this is the problem with distribution. It seems that Kodak doesn't really want to distribute their film to a smaller scale. They're still following old retailer distribution and so on. And this is making an absolute mess for retailers, the final sales person. And we're all getting angry at the final guy selling it to us consumers, but we should not be angry at them. We should be angry at Kodak Alaris and Kodak Rochester and the distribution network in the middle who is doing a good job in distributing film, or at least I hope so, because sometimes it takes forever to get film in certain places of the world. But the problem is that they should be distributing directly to some of the bigger stores. If you are the Fine Lab, or if you are Photo Impex, or if you are, I don't know, AG Photographic, or maybe Freestyle, you should be getting your film directly from Alaris, 
with that 25% discount so you could sell it at your store for 25% less than Nectar. If this is not happening, it's because Kodak is not wanting to be a more logistics company. But sorry, Kodak, I'm letting you know, you are way smaller than you were, if I hadn't noticed, and your stores are selling less than they used to, uh, let's say two decades ago, and you need to step into a bit of the logistics. If you maybe cancel some of these distribution networks who are people sometimes that are not interested in the film industry too much, they're just kind of like flipping film and making their 20% cut or 30% cut or 10% cut, whatever it is that is increasing the prices and making this huge mess on the price point of gold. Please look it up, help somehow. And this we're talking US, which should be the best market for film because Kodak is made in the US and it should be, you know, when it's sold in the US, it should be the minimal amount of players. Let's not talk about Asia. I've heard nightmares from Australia and in Europe. It's an absolute mess. There's accounts that don't even have accounts with Alaris and they're humongous stores. And I'm not gonna mention any names because I don't wanna, you know, you know, shadow or maybe open my sources. But yes, it's a big mess. Alaris, you should be stepping into that distribution. It doesn't take that long uh, to ship, I don't know, a hundred packages a day of a thousand rolls. It's not that hard, honestly. It takes one guy to do that. Basically, one guy and one secretary, maybe just to print the labels at the most, but not even. It's 2022. Step up. But the other problem we have with gold is uh, basically, I guess it was the distribution, the price point, uh, the professionalism, and then that it's Kodak Gold. It's not a new emotion. Oh, and the biggest problem is Kodak has been having problems with converting film. We all know they're capable of making master rolls. Those master rolls are being sometimes made for Ilford, I mean, sorry, for Ilford, for Sinistil or for Kodak or for sometimes other reasons because they make master rolls for science and things like that. So why isn't, why is Kodak making another film that they have to convert? That's going to bring them more issues. There are already supply problems with Kodak uh, Color Plus, with Ultramax, with Pro Image here in Europe, Portra sometimes, like it's a mess. Why bring another one? I would have rather they... You know, I know they're working on the converting, but like, come on guys, don't make it more complicated for yourselves. And then the next film announcement we've had this week is Cinestill 400D. Cinestill, which a lot of people have a problem with because they are not really, they don't have a factory. Like they don't have a film factory themselves. They use third parties, but that same does lemography, okay? Um, has basically brought 400D and they are saying it's a motion picture film that is now available for still photographers, which is a good thing, guys. It's really a good thing. They brought uh, 800T to uh, still shooters. Now we can shoot the 500T officially, the Vision 2 or Vision 3 500T in 35 millimeter cameras and medium format cameras. We can shoot Linhoff 6x17 cinematography film. And yes, it has no remjet and so on, but it's really good news. And now they brought this 400D, which is supposed to be, and I haven't been confirmed by anybody, but this the other line, I'm guessing is 250D vision uh, film from Kodak in 35, 120 and large format, four by five. That is mind blowing. I'm so happy to see another emulsion that is not available for still shooters normally, unless they're home spooling yourself. Because the 35, you can spool pretty easily, but the medium format, you have to be cutting 1.5 millimeters from each side to cut it from, I think, 65 to 60 or 2.5 millimeters from each side. And then you have these little sprocket holes. I've shot a couple rolls like that. It's a mess. And then you have to do ECN2, remove the remjet, so on. Cinestill is doing the hard work of basically finding or contracting Kodak to make these master rolls probably specific to them with a special anti-static coating so we don't have those static problems we've seen on Cinestill back in the day and that we have this film uh, available for 35, which is, I guess, the easiest for people to do themselves back in the day or nowadays, or in medium format, which is being seen from people doing it themselves, but large format too. So that's really good news. And say what you want, but I think it's really cool to see Cinestill bringing these films, just like they did Double X in 120, in 4x5. And I hope 800T gets an upgrade to 4x5 because that would be beautiful to shoot every now and then some 4x5 800T. So I know they've been trying. I hope they do it as soon as possible. And then we have and the third announcement, Fugu Film 400 Slide Film. This comes mentioned by Japan Camera Hunter. Seems that like he's done a collaboration with some people and they've run a new film, a slide film. 
And I, when I saw it first time, like hinted, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I was like, okay, this looks like slide film that's being frozen, like deep frozen, maybe some 400X uh, Provia from Fuji or something like that. But no, they've mentioned in the article uh, that it's basically a brand new film, that it's slide, that is ISO 400, that is the last time we saw 400 slide was uh, Provia 400X from Fuji, it was a beautiful film, and it's available in 35, and it's called Fugu Film. It's not branded as J uh, Japan Camera Hunter, JCH. I don't know if it's because he wants to keep different, if they're different entities themselves, or because it's just a branding problem. I have no idea and I have no issue with it. I'm just very happy to see a new slide film. The last time we saw this was E100, which was the Kodak reformulation of Ektachrome. And honestly, it says it's made in Europe. So it breaks my brain on really figuring out if it's made on Innovasco, if it's made in ACFA, because like their uh, street pan is made in ACFA. Or so far, that's, it says Belgium. The only factory I know in Belgium, I think, is ACFA uh, factory. And uh, it breaks my brain, like, how did they make it? How did they manage to do the resources? Like, slide film is not an easy thing to make. Uh, we've heard Ferrania saying that basically first they do black and white and then from there you can add more layers and you end up with a slide film. How did this happen? I don't know, but I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see an option. I hope that it continues to be an option, not just a short run and then someone goes bankrupt or whoever is making it can't do it anymore. But yeah, I'm very excited to see. To be honest, um, two of the films are made in Rochester by Kodak, be it for Cinestill, be it for Kodak Gold and one's being made in Europe for Fugu Film. Happy to see a bit of diversion in the color industry. And yeah, to me, it's very interesting to keep seeing Kodak being able to produce master roles and then maybe Cinestill is spooling somewhere else, probably maybe with Ilford, that Ilford's done these kind of services before for others, maybe with FOMA, or maybe I don't know who can be doing these uh, roles of 35 for many, many years. Photo Empix has been a partner of Cinestill back in the day. Maybe Adox is doing it for them. I don't know. But it's really interesting to see that Kodak can really make a lot more master roles. The problem they have is, as always, the converting, the making the 35 millimeter canisters, the putting the film inside, and all that. And it looks like distribution. Please, Kodak, fix distribution. So, yeah, I would love to hear your point. Um, the sad thing we've seen is that that looks like gold is not going to be cheaper than Ektar. Most of the times, I really hope that Kodak maybe steps in and maybe helps this. We really need to have a bit of interference with distribution, maybe uh, calling people for having so smaller margins or whatever it is. Because I don't mind paying 15 euros for Portra, 14 for Ektar, but I don't want to pay 14 for gold. 14, if they're saying it's 25, it should be 12 or 11 or whatever 25% is of 14 because it's a cheaper film. It isn't as good as Portra. I'll talk about my results as soon as I can. I've d shot the film, I scanned it. It does look like uh, gold. It has less latitude. The colors are a bit different. It has a bit of that yellow gold look, which is something you can like or dislike. I kind of like it in certain scenarios, but maybe on medium format. It's sharp enough, but not you know the sharpest film ever. But yeah, I'm just curious. I want to hear what you guys think. Um, I'm excited. Honestly, I would never would expect that we would see three film emulsions uh, launch for still photographers in the same week. I hope it keeps on going. I hope that people notice this. The press is great. The Petapixel articles are great. All this stuff is great. It makes more people looking at film, maybe interested in film, maybe investing in film, maybe bringing some, you know, R&D back into film, which is what we've been needing for the past decade where we've been re under like, you know, destructuring. Now let's see if we can restructure slowly and efficiently. And I hope film, like everybody says, it's a bubble nowadays. I hope it's not that big of a bubble. And if we have a bit of a burst, it's not a major one and we have no more bankruptcies. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave the comment below. And as always, I left the link uh, in the description. I left the Patreon or a donation if you feel like helping this channel. Helps me turn on the cameras, talk about this stuff. Um, and if you see the 8x10 here, I fixed it finally. Thanks, Germany Cameras, for sending me a ground glass to fix my 8x10. I hope to be shooting more outdoors as we are having more sun here in Finland. So, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.